which began with such hope, it's easier to understand those truths and to see beyond the tragedy of Challenger, America's first shuttle disaster. And at the end of the day, I was just kind of like, look, if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the precipitate. That's a girl. <laughs> Excuse me. How did you get in here? We have been waiting for you to wake up. Come on over, join us. Oh my, wait. Sally Ride, Clelia Dumasher, and Caroline Herschel? What are you doing here in, in modern clothes? Mm, I may be dead and also a character in your head, but I have been wearing corsets for so long that I just wanted to feel comfortable, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, not to be rude, but why are you here eating my food? To celebrate you being the first American woman in space. Technically, I did that in 1983. I just still can't believe you're all here. I mean, Clelia, you pioneered advocating core body strength, increasing exercises to reduce the pain of menstrual cramps and disprove the widely held belief that women were physically inferior to men because they couldn't breathe in their diaphragm. Because of corsets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So tell us, May, are you excited about your launch tomorrow? I mean, I discovered several comets in space, but you actually get to go there. You must feel like I did when I got my golden medal for science on my 96th birthday. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited, but I'm also a little nervous. I mean, I've wanted to go for so long. And to be the first African-American woman in space, that is quite an achievement. Yeah, but you know what, if that inspires future generations, great. But. 2,000 African-American women had gone up before me, I'd still have my hand up. I just want to do it. Cheers to that. But I am worried. I mean, what if something goes wrong? Won't be for nothing? May before my first space flight, people asked if flight was going to affect my reproductive organs. They would ask me if I cried on the job when there was trouble. But when you're up there in space, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, if you're white or you're black, you're an astronaut there to do a job. Plain and simple. You don't know how lucky you are. People thought I was so risque because I talked about menstruation <laughs> and men's sheaths. You know, periods and condoms. <laughs> oh, the horror. Yeah. <laughs> In my time, people thought hysteria was caused by a wandering uterus, which blocked passages, obstructed breathing, and caused disease. All you have to do is go up into space. All right, ladies. Thank you. I feel better. I'm glad you stopped by from your busy dead lives and, okay, <laughs> not quite yeah. dead lives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, have you been here the whole time? I'm from the future. Wow. You don't know me yet, but someday you will. I've looked up to you my whole life, since I was a little girl. And now, I'm about to be one of the first astronauts to go to Mars. Without you, I never would have had the opportunity to discover that there is actually alien life there. And yes, that discovery actually led to the pending doom of Earth, but that's not your fault. Wait, what? What? Oh my god. I'm kidding. Oh jeez. But seriously, May, if you didn't go to space and take that chance, these barriers would have never been broken down. You opened up all the doors for girls like me to dream. Not only do I know that you can do this, but when you do this, you're gonna suddenly exist for future generations to look up to. Thank you for what you're about to do. Aww. Guys, I was born in 1750. I am so old. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, Caroline. <laughs> it's not about you. We're celebrating May. <laughs> right. right. Love you, May. Best way to make your dreams come true? Wake up. I said that.